Okay, and um, welcome to this week's lab. So today we are going to launch an EC2 instance, and we will also host a very simple website on that instance incidents. And we will also learn that how we can access that EC2 instance by using SSH. So first, uh, so now we are on the AWS console. And you can find out the EC2 instance uh, services. So you can expand all services and beneath compute. And you will see EC2 is there. Or you can use the search bar and type EC2. So that also will bring up the EC2 instance uh, service console. Uh, so here, right now, by default, uh, we don't have any instance. Uh, again, we are using the AWS AdKit account for this lab. So let's start to launch an instance. So let's click Launch Instance. And this is the way you can choose different AMI, so Amazon Machine Image. And those are the default ones. So for example, you can use Amazon Linux, or you can, if you want, build an RDS, and you can choose, uh, you can launch RDS directly by using AWS RDS service. Uh, you can also choose the, the other uh, operation system like Windows, Linux, etc. Uh, you can also go to the marketplace and also uh, to search for other AMIs. So those may not be free. And also you can go to the community AMIs. So those are the AMIs that are free. So for example, if you want to build a website, Okay, and you can choose those website images. Okay, uh, so now let's go to the quick start and let's clear the search. And let's use the default one, so which is Amazon Linux, uh, which we have the free tier. So let's select that one. And here you can choose the instance type. So basically, the mouse more CPUs, the more memories or the more storage, the price will be higher. Okay, so there are a lot of instances that you can choose for different purposes. So some are good for compute, some are good for storage, and some are good for uh, have huge memories. So for this lab, so we are going to use the default one, so that you T2 macro, Okay, and which has one virtual CPU, one gigabyte uh, memory. And next, let's go to the details. So this is where you can see, do you want to use auto scaling? And do you want to use a different VPC? So here, let's use a default one. And you can choose the subnet, etc. Um, and also you can define the IAM rules. So if you want this instance to access the other services, and then you need to define the IAM. So let's leave everything as default, but let's go to the very bottom. So here, let's type something about in the user data. So user data is a data that you provided. And when AWS launch that instance, they will execute those data first. So this is where, for example, if you want to build a website and you can let that instance to download um, the website and also set up the website. So the code for the user data is available on my GitHub. So if you go to my GitHub and user data for EC2, so let's copy those user data. And now let's go back and paste the user data here. So basically this will uh, install an Apache um, web server and also will create a very simple HTML uh, file so that it's just one single page on that server. So it hello from your web server. All right, so that is for the configuration of this EC2 instance. And here we can choose whether or not we want to add additional storage. Okay, so here you can see we have 
8 gigabyte, so you can choose a big one. Uh, you can choose different storage. Okay. Um, and you can see whether or not you want in, uh, encrypt your data. Okay. And then next, we can add tag. So tags are the great way that you for us to help organize the resources. Okay. And so let's leave that as blank. So security group. So by default, uh, the security group is like a firewall that by default, it will allow the port 22, which is for SSH. And right now we allow the IPs from anywhere to access this instance by using SSH, okay? And now let's review the instance. So everything looks great. Okay, and we now can start hit launch. Okay, so before we start, and you can see whether or not you want to download the key pair. So there, there is a public key on the EC2 instance, and you need a private key on your local computer so that you can access your EC2 instance from your local computer. So let's say we want to choose create new key pair. For the name, let's say we want this one for lab2. And let's download this key pair. And now let's launch that instances. So click launch instance. Okay, so it may take uh, several minutes so that for your instance to be fully uh, to be available. So let's view the instance. So now we can see we have one that is pending. Uh, we didn't give it name. So if you check this instance, we know that this is uh, uh, launched in this US East one, so that Northern Virginia and availability zone is 1A. We also have this public DNS. And here we can see the more details. Uh, because we're using an educated account, so that's there's something that we cannot do with the educated account. So those that's the reason we have those errors. Okay, and also the other information. Here we can see the security. So this is the security group that we defined. Networking. Okay, storage. Uh, the status, it is running. We can also monitor uh, the usage in the real time. So it will be updated later. So now it's still um, pending. So if you refresh, Okay, so you can see it is still initial, initializing. So that's why we don't see any date yet. So let's just wait a few uh, minutes. And while we are waiting, so let's go ahead and let's get ready for our um, private keys that for SSH. So uh, we already downloaded the key pair and that's from EC2 instance. So that is a PM file, PM file. Uh, because now I'm using Windows, so I need to uh, use a tool that to SSH the EC2 instance. So the popular one is called PUTTY. Okay, so that is a tool that on Windows that can, you can SSH other uh, remote computers. So before we start, let's use PUTTY key generator. So this one will convert your PM into the private key that can be used in PUTTY. All right, so let's first use PUTTY key generator and let's load this PM file, so load. And here let's switch to the other files and you can see PM and open it. Okay, and that's a notice. And make sure that we check RSA uh, format. So that is type the key that we want to generate. And let's save this one as a private key. Okay. And here let, you can give the name again. I'm going to call this one lab2. And that will save the private key in this PPK format. 
So let's save it. Now we can close this key generator. Okay. And now we can start to using the PUTTY uh, to access our EC2 instance. Okay, so now let's go back to check the status of our instance. So let's refresh. Okay, and check past. We don't have any alarms. And let's go to the details. Okay, so now we can see we have the public IP address. So that address that is open to the internet. We have the private IP address. So that IP address in our VPC. So if you have other instances launched within the same VPC, and if they want those instances to talk with each other, and then they can just use the I private IP. And this is public IP DNS. So that is an URL. And when the website is ready and you can try to open this url okay so if now we just launch this url directly so let's copy that and type http colon slash slash and now we paste this url and we click enter so we will not be able to access the website Okay, so the reason is because we only opened the port 2020. So that is open to SSH for SSH. So we didn't open the port for HTTP. Okay, so that's why we have this error. So to open the port for HTTP, we go back to our instance and we'll go to security. So here in the security group, we can see only the 22 port is now open. So we open the security group. So that's the firewall. And let's say we added inbounding rules. And now let's add a new rule and we want HTTP. Okay, and for this lab, uh, we didn't enable the HTTPS. So here, let's say we want anywhere. Remember, this is very you should be careful when you enable everywhere. So make sure you know what you are doing. So when you choose everywhere, so that because anyone that have ac access to internet will be able to access your website if you choose anywhere. So now let's save the rules. Okay. So now we uh, go back to our instance. So it is still running. So now if we refresh this URL, okay, so now you can see we can access the server, okay? So hello from your web server. Cool, so now we can access this server um, as a public user so that we can visit this server. Next, we are going to access this server by using SSH. So we want to go to inside of this instance. So now let's bring our P-U-T-T-Y. <laughs> I'm not sure how do you call that one. So uh, I just call it P-U-T-T-Y. For the host name, uh, so the format for the host name is normally it will be uh, EC2-user at. Okay. And next, you need to pass uh, you need to fill in your uh, public IP address or your public host name. So let's go back to the console and then let's, you can either use the address or use the host name. So let's use the host name or DNS name. And here, paste. Let's keep the port as 20, 22. So that's fine. And the next, we are going to uh, bring our private key. So we expand SSH. In this authorization, we bring the private key. Okay. So the, that is the lab2.ppk. So that is the ppk file. So that was a private key that we generated earlier. And let's open it. Now let's open. So when you open it, uh, you will see a window, see some warning, so you can just accept or click yes. 
So let's all paint. Okay, so you can say this alert. And I say yes. Okay, so now this is a uh, I'm accessing this EC2 instance by using the SSH. Okay, and you can now let's say you can modify your website, you can change something on your website. Okay, uh, so now we're within this EC2 instance. So let's try to change this web page. So that is HTML dot, uh, that is index dot HTML. So let's run a very simple uh, Linux command. So that is to do, and we're using this tool to change the index dot HTML file within that folder. So that's the file that now we are viewing on the website. So now let's hit enter. So here we are in this editing mode. So here we can see not exactly the same HTML file. So let's write something. Uh, hello from website. Hello from your web server and also change via SSH. And now we hit Control S to save the change. And we hit Control X to exit that editing. And now if we refresh this web page, Yes, now we can see the change. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And so that's basically for this lab. And let's close this SSH. And when you're done with this lab, and don't forget to uh, terminate this instance, because when the instance is running, it will cost your credit. So let's check this instance and go to the instance state. And let's choose terminate instance. And it has a warning that when you terminate the instance, the storage, the data on that storage will be lost. So that's fine. And let's hit terminate. And after a few seconds, yeah, it's very fast. We can see that your instance has been terminated. Okay, so that's all for this lab.